I was having a rough time with that last part I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to stop. <laughs> it has been a good day to be the Lord's people, and I want to thank the ladies for that wonderful meal we had at dinner time, at lunch time, whatever how you call it. I call it just. I, know I, I don't want to be something I don't want to be late for. <laughs> um, it has been a good day, and I really appreciate uh, this great day that the Lord has given to us together. We we are so blessed to have such a wonderful God, Amen. a wonderful Savior. Amen. And, and we sing these songs, you know, and if they don't inspire you, if they don't encourage you, what? Why not? Why? Why? We ought to be encouraged knowing that we serve an awesome God. Amen. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles tonight to the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Revelation, chapter 5. I'm not going to try to explain to you a lot of symbols and stuff of that nature. But I want to talk to you about the worthiness of the Lamb of God. The worthiness of the Lamb of God. The Lamb is worthy. Revelation, chapter 5. It says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither out of the earth, was able to open the book neither to look thereupon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. That was a, when you read that right there, that, that gets... That just gets me when I read that right there, those, that verse right there. Thinking about the Lord and how great He is. It says, I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and in the, the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as, as it had been slain, having seven horns and the seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And He came and, and took the book out of the right hand of Him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of holders, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard a voice, or the voice of the angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and, and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I say, in blessing and honor and glory and power, be upon him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the, the un, unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four be said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, once again, we come here tonight, and Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house of worship. And Lord, may I say first of all that you are truly worthy of all of our awe, of all of our praise, of all of our honor. And Lord, you are so worthy to be called God, to be called King, to be called Master. You are worthy to be served here tonight. Worthy to be praised. And Lord, we give you the we give you the praise and the glory. We give it all in Jesus' name. Because it's in his his name we do pray. Amen. Amen. 
twice there there's references to the Lord being known as the Lamb was was slain before the foundation of the world. Now, Jesus is said here to be worthy to open the seals, to open the books. Now, it's my understanding that within, within this, book, this book of these seals are the judgments that were to take place throughout the book of Revelation. You know, and, and there was John, and John, of course, had heard that no one was worthy to open that book. No one was worthy to, to examine and, and to open the seals and, and open up the judgment. See, John saw this book. What it was, it was actually just, just a scroll. Uh, he saw it, and, you know, and, uh, of course, it had been sealed. And, and, and when John saw it, he saw it that it was at the right hand. And uh, of God, and, and you got to understand that this is at this point, John would he had to be overwhelmed by what he had seen, or what he had heard from the Lord up to this point. Remember, this is the same John who had walked with Jesus, who the Bible says who had loved Jesus. And of course, we know that here John's sitting, well, he's on the Isle of Patmos, and uh, of course, he's he's in exile, he's a uh, you know, he's been just, in other words, he's cast away from the rest of society. You know, he's come, and the, the Lord has revealed to John some of the great things. But to hear, hear these words, that the Lord is worthy to open this book. You know, could you imagine being John? Could you imagine what it must have been like to, to uh, be on the Isle of Patmos? Being in exile. But when he heard that no one was worthy to open the book, the Bible says that he wept. He wept because he was heartbroken. He wanted to see, he wanted to see what the Lord had in store. He wanted to see and hear about the judgment, about the opening of the seals. John wanted to hear and to see what God had in store for mankind. Now think about this. The angels of God were not worthy to open this seal or this book. The archangels, Gabriel and Michael, they were not worthy to open this book. All the elders, all the Old Testament saints, all the New Testament saints were not worthy to open this book. So you can just get a picture in your mind of just how John must have felt when he heard that, that no one was worthy to open the book. But then to finally hear those words, wait a minute, John, there is one that's worthy. The one who died for your sins, the one who taketh away the sins of the world, the one who hung upon the cross of Calvary, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God, He is worthy to open this book, John. And I can just get a picture of John's face when he heard those words. The tears stopped. I, mean, I can just see the glow. The glow on John's face because he goes from being sad to an overwhelming rejoicing knowing that the Lord Jesus Himself was able to open this book. Now, could you just imagine John too, when he turned around, whenever he was told that the Lamb of God, the Lion of the child of Judah, could open up that book, and, and John turned around, and there stood Jesus. Get that in your mind. What a beautiful picture that had to be. The Lamb of God. It's worthy, John, to open this book. Now we ask the question tonight. Why would Jesus be worthy? Why, why is he worthy to open the book? To reveal all the judgments of God? First of all, because he is God. But he, he is a sovereign God. He is a holy and a righteous God. 
He is a sinless God. Aren't you glad tonight to know that Jesus was sinless? Amen. Think if he had committed one sin in his life, he would not have been worthy to die for our sins. He would not have been worthy to open the books. And folks, if Jesus had not died for our sins, we all, each one of us here tonight, there would be no need in us being here. What good would it be to, to come and to worship a Savior if he was dead and in the grave? Or if he was dead and you know he was a sinful Savior? He's worthy of our praise and our honor tonight because he Amen. is mighty God. He is a holy God. Amen. A pure God. Amen. A sinless God. You know, I hear people say all the time, well, not all the time, but I've heard people say, oh, I believe that the Lord could have sinned. No. I don't believe he had it in him. No. Now, I know the Bible says he could be tempted. But we, everybody could be tempted. But just because Jesus could be tempted did not mean that he would submit to sin. You know, you tempt the, the, because of the fact that Jesus did not have all the nature that we didn't know. Yes, yes he, was, he was part man and part God. But he was, actually, if you say he was 100% man, but then again, 100% God. Well, it, it, those things are kind of hard to understand, aren't they? How can God be God and God be man? But He is. He is so worthy of our honor and our praise because He is truly sinless. The Bible tells us, again, when we think about, about you know, as I said, there are those who say that the Lord could have sinned, He could have been tempted, He could have done things wrong, but the Bible says that in all points, all points, talking about Jesus, he was tempted, as we are, yet without sin. You may have been tempted with him. You know, I'm sure that they, they, they tempted him in ways we can't even imagine. Look at how, how Satan tempted him. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, well, you know, Satan said, I'll give you everything. If you just fall down and worship me. I'll give you the kingdoms of the earth. Of the world. <laughs> Satan didn't have enough sense to realize they already belonged to Christ. <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> you see, our Savior is sinless. He's worthy to open those books because of the very fact, folks, He is sinless. Can you just imagine living your whole life and never sinning? <laughs> never, never having any sin in your life? Not one evil thought? <laughs> Boy, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> just, just like I would love to be able to say, well, I don't have any sin. Because I'd be lying. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Bible says, he who says he has no sin is a liar. Yeah. Heard people say, well, they live above sin. You're living better than I am. <laughs> Worthy is the Lamb Amen. of God because He is sinless. But think about this. Not only is He sinless, folks, but He was willing to submit Himself totally to the will of God the Father. That's great worthy to, to that's great worthy to open those seals. That's why it's worthy to open that book. Folks, that's why he's again worthy for our praise and our honor tonight. Because he submitted his, his life, his will to the Father. He said, Father, I'll die for them. I'll go to the cross for them. I'll walk that, that road of torture. I'll submit myself to you and your will, Father. You see, that's why, folks, that's why I love my Lord. Because I know tonight that He is truly worthy of my love. Amen. And my, my, my praise and my thanksgiving to Him. I can't say enough. I can't say enough.
cannot say enough about my God. Amen. He's truly, truly is worthy. You know, it just bothers me when people they try to they try to curse my God. They try to demean the Christian faith or, or Christ Himself. You know, there's nothing wrong to say. Well, to say the word God in public. Okay, that can go for several different people. But to use the word Jesus in public, well, Jesus Christ, not too many people want to hear that. You see, they're, they, they, they don't want to honor Him. They don't want to think about what He has done for us. Consider this. Consider what Jesus has done for us as the Lamb of God. Remember over there in the, in the book of Exodus, <coughs> back in the Old Testament, they go and they would, of course, they would select the what would be the perfect Lamb. It had to have no blemishes. I mean, it couldn't be sick. No spots. And they would take that lamb, of course, and they'd take it into their homes and, you know, and, and for a few days they'd feed it and watch over it and make sure that it was spotless. Make sure that it wasn't sick. After a few days of feeding and taking care of that little lamb, they would slay it. They'd kill it. Then they would take the blood you know, on the outside of their homes and spread the, the blood and shake the cross on their doors and the doorposts, signifying the Lamb of God who is worthy of our honor and our praise. You see, that's who Jesus is. He is truly that lamb which was slain for all of mankind. So that folks, so that we could, you know, just to put it plain, so that we could go to heaven. Sorry, that man. So that we wouldn't have to worry about a place called hell. See, Jesus is worthy because he not only, folks, is he sinless and not only is he because he is submissive, but he is that perfect sacrifice. He purchased the victory upon the cross of Calvary. It was Jesus who said as he was there and he was dying, he said, it's finished. The sacrifice has been made. The lamb has been killed. Slain. Slain for you and me. You know, and I also believe this. Uh, we probably all do. But probably the day we see Jesus in heaven, I believe we'll still see those nail-scarred hands, folks. Amen. Amen. You know, we'll, we'll have that constant reminder. The suffering and the price that the Lamb of God made for us. You see how, how why I say he's, he's worthy of everything that we can offer to him. He's worthy of our tithes and offerings. He's worthy tonight of our coming to church on, on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. He's worthy of all those things. He's worthy of our honor and praise. And one last thought here tonight. Our God is very... He's worthy of our praise because He it is successful in carrying out the plan of God. He's worthy of our praise, folks. This is where it says here in verse 9, it says, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals of earth, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us by, to God by the blood out of every kindred and every tongue and people and nation. See, the Lord says here that in the Word of God, it says that these heavenly choir sung a new song. But they didn't sing a song about a new song. They just sung a new song, okay? <laughs> but that's, that tells us that Jesus set out to do and complete 
what he set out to do. Folks, listen, Jesus is not hanging on the cross today. No. He's not in some cold, damp tomb. He's not even suffering today for our sins. No. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf, making it possible that, that we can go to the Father with our prayers and our problems. That's who Jesus is. That's why He is worthy. See, back in the Old Testament day, or back in the New Testament days, excuse me, I'm getting my stories mixed up here. <laughs> but um, Satan, when Jesus was upon the cross, he thought he had Jesus defeated. I'm sure he must have laughed. Huh, look, I got him on the cross. He's, he's, he's dying. He won't bother us anymore. He won't be able to come down and to preach anymore. Boy. The devil didn't know how successful Christ was. Amen. He didn't know that that was God's plan all along, was for Jesus to go to the cross to suffer for all of mankind and to bring the hope of eternal glory and everlasting life to each one of us here tonight. Yeah. You see, He truly is worthy mm -hmm. of your living for Him. Not just on Sunday. You know, we have too many people who, who just want to be Sunday, Sunday uh, Christians. Our God is, is worthy enough that we can serve Him and, and acknowledge Him seven days a week. Amen. 365 days a year. <coughs> is He that worthy to you? Is He worthy enough to you to, for you to follow Him? To submit your life to Him, to honor and to love Him, and to praise Him with every word that comes out of your mouth, everything that you do, to let it be to honor the one who is worthy of your praise. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for Lord, we thank you for the blessing of being in your house of worship. Lord, we thank you tonight for the fact that we do, we do serve a risen Savior who truly is worthy, Lord, of our praise and our honor. Lord, where would we be here tonight without the Lamb of God who truly took away the sins of this world? And Father, we, we just ask the Lord tonight that you bless this church. Lord, she's, she's a God-fearing church. We ask you, Lord, to bless her and all that she does. All this we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Would you please stay? <coughs> <coughs>
there anything we need to bring before the church before we dismiss? Kevin, would you dismiss us, please? Our precious Heavenly Savior, we come asking your forgiveness. Asking for your love and mercy to be shed upon us. Pray that you'll be with the ones in the community that are sick or don't know you as their Savior, but they'll open their eyes and their hearts and let you in and, and see your, your greatness and your immense love. Pray that you'll be with Brother Baker and his family and, and, and folks in this church and strengthen them and, and bring us all closer to you. Go with us, Lee Gaddis and Drake. In your precious son, 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 thank you. Amen. Did you see you girls again? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're here. Yeah, I can't.